Hey guys, uh, in this tutorial I just want to show you a uh, kind of follow up with the um, Instagram exercise that we did in class um, and we used Google Drive to do that so I want to just show you all the really cool tools that you guys have at your disposal for free um, just from using Google Drive. Um, I'm just going to go to drive.google.com so you can see um, if you don't already use it, it's a great tool for making documents and making spreadsheets and all kinds of things. Um, but what I used it for um, on uh, and during class last week was I went to new and I created a new form. Okay, and so that's a great way to just create a brand new kind of survey. Um, if you want to survey anybody and get data, it's a great data gathering tool. So to create uh, forms and then from those forms you can get responses. So um, anyway, it's very simple to make a form here. If you wanted to just you know call it um, student. Um, interviews and then um, the first question would be something like what is your name you know and then um, the great thing is you can choose multiple choice you can have text you can do all kinds of different things within this it's a customized completely customized form so um, I use it all the time um, you'll see that here when I did the um, Instagram exercise I'll just show you the form that I made and it's uh, got the title and then it's got you know your name and then a form that you can fill that out and kind of just sells for every and, and pretty much each of these was text but you can add multiple choice you can add radio buttons and all kinds of things so number one like Google Drive just provides a really great format for you to create a new form that will then uh, and this is the beauty of it as well is it will take your form and automatically create for you a spreadsheet and you can see that spreadsheet right here it's fall 2012 Instagram exercise responses and you can see that it's a different icon and it should pop up as soon as you let your form go live and publish it and send it out and people start filling it out then you get this uh, you know spreadsheet full of the timestamp on when they submitted and then their name and basically all the responses that you provided are listed here so really really awesome for data storytelling because you get everything in a in a clean kind of format now this would be part of the data gathering process still um, and now now the challenge though is for me to isolate the pieces of this story that I actually want to tell and so that comes into the second step which would be understanding the data or it would be step at two of the data of the data storytelling process would be now trying to kind of figure out what were the most popular states and which were the most popular cities and just kind of looking at the data and analyzing it but before I do that I really have to what they call clean the data so this right now is very messy data and the reason is because um, if I want to put this into a Google Map engine um, Google Maps may not recognize capital T lowercase x or it may not I'm sure it would understand the word Texas but you know if you misspelled like somebody did uh, misspelled the word um, Marcus M-A-C-U uh, M-A-R-C-U-S instead of O-S it may not find that on a map so part of the job in uh, you know gathering the data and understanding it is actually sitting here and cleaning the data so what I did is I went to file download as and you can download your um, Google spreadsheet into an Excel spreadsheet and what I did is I then opened it up into an Excel spreadsheet you can see that here and I went through and I cleaned it okay so along that process of cleaning it is I converted all these to capital TX's and then what I did is I um, deleted the duplicates and so anytime you have a form people will misspell things people will maybe not fill in the right you know information and uh, sometimes they'll do multiple submissions and so I want the cleanest data as I can get and so I have to sit here and kind of delete certain things and add certain things and, and kind of fix that. Another thing that I need to do during this process is I have to turn these cells from city state and I have to convert them into and, and another thing that I did here as you can see between these two forms is I deleted the timestamp when I'm trying to tell the story of you know why people came to Texas State obviously I don't care when they submitted it so I went ahead and deleted this I also didn't care you know in this story about y'all all of y'all's names and everything because really this is focusing on the person that was interviewed so I actually went through and deleted these three so I I kinda pared it down to only the cells that I'm gonna be using within this story for example it would be the person's name and then their city and state now the 
problem with the city and state is that they both, in order for Google Maps to accept this as a location, it needs to be in the same cell. So what I did is way over here on the right is I created a formula and I use the formula called concatenate. And what that's going to do is it's going to take B2, which is Angleton, and then it's going to put in a comma and a space, and that's what these little quotes are doing, and then it's going to put in C2. So really what I told it to do was um, said, you know, pick the city, add a comma and a space, and then give me the state. And that's exactly what happened here. So then you can just kind of go down the line and just tell it as it goes down to you know, concatenate, which is join those cells. And now what I have to do is I have to take this whole column, all of these cities and say, because right now these are all um, kind of formulas. You can see that up here. It's, it's just a formula. It's not actual text. So I have to, again, copy this and then paste it into a new column. And then there's this really cool thing called paste special where you could just paste the values and not any kind of formula. So it's kind of a big process if you think about it, but um, now what I can do is, um, and I don't necessarily expect you guys to do this right off the bat, but just showing you the power of a Google form. Now I've basically got, um, that was a, one of the interviews, I basically have in the Excel spreadsheet, I've got the name of the person interviews, I've got the Instagram link, and then I've got the city and state. And those are the three pieces of data that I do want to tell this story. So all everything that I just did in terms of, you know, taking this answer, you know, spreadsheet, cleaning it, and now uploading it back, that's kind of the process of understanding. It's kind of step two of this process is cleaning it and then trying to understand it. So let me go ahead and do one more thing. I'm going to go ahead and click new and I'm going to upload this Excel spreadsheet that I created. So I'm going to do a file upload and um, let me go ahead and find it. It must be in my downloads, I'm assuming. And there it is. So I called it cleaned fall 2012 responses. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And now Google Forms is letting me upload this clean version, which is excellent. Okay, and once I upload it, you can see that all of my data is obviously there. It looks a little bit different from a regular Google spreadsheet, so if I want to open it in Google Sheets, I could just click Open, and then it will open it in a Google Sheet as well. So I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, Cleaned Fall 22 Instagram Updated, and I'm going to call it um, Sheet, just so that I know this is the Google Sheet version of it. So. That is basically the next step in the data journalism, data storytelling process is um, cleaning the data and understanding it. Now the last step is actually visualizing it. So we have all this data and now we want to map it. Okay, so what uh, Google also has is this really great um, program called Google Fusion Tables. And if you do not have it, um, if you click connect more apps, and you, it should be one of the first apps that pop up. But Google Fusion Tables allows you to take data and visualize it, um, whether it's a chart or a graph or a map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new Fusion Table. And I'm going to choose a Google Spreadsheet, and that was one that I had uploaded earlier. So this is it, cleaned, right? Go ahead and select it. And there's only, you know, so many data pieces here, and, you know, it found it. So that means it's reading it just fine. And I'm going to go ahead and press Finish. And what it's doing is it's importing all the data into a table. It's converting it from the spreadsheet into a table. And from there, I can tell this table to do certain things with my data. Uh, for example, I know that these obviously are cities and states, and these are going to be my location pieces. So here in this drop down, drop down, I can change it from being just known as text, and I can convert that into a location. Okay, so it basically took my data and is now everything that's in yellow is findable by Google Maps which is great. Um, everything else is basically considered a link or text and so um, it's a great thing to be able to take an entire row and, and let it be seen as location instead of text. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new tab here and this is where you can add different charts and layouts and if you had other types of data like numbers um, it'd be great to have like a chart or a 
or a graph or something like that, but we're going to turn this data into a map. So I'm going to click Add Map. And now it's just kind of scanning through all my data and searching. You can see it's geocoding each of those 85 ungeocoded rows. And so it's going through all of the data that you helped put in, and it's making sure that it's findable on a map. Now you can see that right now it's 0% ambiguous, and that means it's having a great time finding these. Um, we clean the data enough to where it's having no problem finding these things. Now if I didn't clean it, it'll probably, it would probably end up being like 25% ambiguous or 15% ambiguous. It wouldn't really know what to do with each of those data points. And that's why it's important to, you know, clean the data before you put it into an engine like this. And so it's pretty much done. And so once it's finished, we'll see it on a map. And now we've got a nice little Google map of different places that just random Texas State students are from. Now, obviously a lot of them are from Texas. And so now I could just click on a different area and see, you know, okay, this is Jessie Garcia. She's from San Angelo. And then I can click on her and see, oh, he is, he's actually a student in this class. Awesome. Uh, he is, you know, from San Angelo. I can go down and see who's from Tucson. And then I could kind of scroll way out. And I noticed that there were some people that were not even from the U.S. And then I can kind of scroll around here and kind of search for those people. Um, let's see. Okay, we got some people from Venezuela and Colombia. So it's really cool. You can just click on this map and see, oh, where was that person from? Oh, Colombia. And then you can find out. Hello, my name is Santiago. I'm um, from Colombia, and I came to Texas State because um, of their business program at the McCoy Business School. And I felt like it was a great opportunity to uh, get a bachelor's degree. So very cool. I think this is a great way to take data that you gather yourself. And then, I mean, Texas State could use this data in showing where, you know, different students are from and a great way to add interactivity and um, an engagement, I think, to a, a story that they're maybe already writing. Or maybe they'll find different stories and maybe cover just the people that were from other, other countries. So anyway, that's just a quick little easy way to take data, create your own, just using Google Drive and, um, and just kind of build your own story using data.